humans have always been intrigued about immortality and eternal, and eternal youth. References can be found actually across different cultures and historical periods. And this quest runs even to our era. So modern aging research aims to identify uh, why humans age and aims to discover ways to make us live longer and healthier lives. So because of this research, we now know more than 2,000 genes that can modulate longevity and more than 400 chemical compounds that can extend lifespan in model organisms. Just before, you heard the talk about the benefits of eating less and uh, the development of drugs that can mimic these lifestyle interventions. So knowing all that, why do we still grow old, get sick and die? Historically, only one in 5,000 discovery stage drug candidates will ever get approval to make it to the clinic. For those that actually make it to clinical trials, the numbers are substantially better, but still uh, very discouraging. 86% of them is going to fail. So what can we do to actually uh, uh, improve this, the efficiency of, uh, of this process? In, in aging research, or for drugs that uh, actually uh, uh, target aging per se, things are uh, even worse because of the long time it takes for aging to develop. And therefore, these clinical trials take longer and therefore are even more expensive. So the question goes back to how can we improve the efficiency of this process? This 86% is a huge gap. And in my opinion, the answer is called basic research. So I believe that we need to understand before we design, and we need to understand before we intervene and we act. Doing clinical research is rather simple. You're working on finding a cure for something. However, when you are in basic research, things are different. So you spend your life trying to understand how cells function, how proteins interact with each other, how genes are expressed. And it's actually very hard to even explain to your family and to your friends and to the public what you're doing, and even to some funding agencies. But luckily, funding organizations such as the ERC, the European Research Council, or the Max Planck Society, for instance, still appreciate the importance of basic research and continue to support uh, curiosity-driven uh, science, which is the basis for all of these discoveries. So to explain in a simple way um, uh, our work, what my group does to tackle age-related diseases, I will ask you to think of a very simple example, like a metaphor. So some animals, like bears, they hibernate. They are active, hunting in uh, periods that sufficient food is available in their, their environment. And on the contrary, in the winter, when food is a limiting factor, they lower their metabolism and they kind of sleep until the conditions are optimal again. And this is exactly what our cells are also doing. So our cells have very complex mechanisms to sense the availability of nutrients in their environment and modify uh, their metabolism accordingly uh, in order to grow or to lower their metabolic needs and to actually wait until food is available again. But why is that important? Going back to our example, if a bear would stay active during the winter, it wouldn't be able to cover its nutritional needs and would probably starve to death. So similar to this, the molecular sensing mechanisms that our cells have are very crucial for our cells to adapt properly to their environment. And therefore, they're very often linked to aging and disease where, when they malfunction. So not unexpectedly, uh, interventions such as dietary restriction or diet mimicking drugs aim to restore these exact mechanisms. So far, however, uh, applying uh, uh, these interventions to humans uh, has not been that efficient uh, and, and, and on the contrary, um, uh, it has not been, cannot be tolerated that well by most people and, does, uh, and actually doesn't work so well for many, many people. And it's very generic, so in my opinion, it's like using a butcher's cleaver uh, to perform a brain surgery. So our work aims to identify how precisely these mechanisms work in healthy cells and what goes wrong in aging and in disease. And this way, I believe that we can identify novel, more targeted ways uh, to actually figure out uh, uh, what we exactly we should be uh, targeting in, in this process and how to modulate these mechanisms in the right organs and at the right time and to the right extent. So by increasing our knowledge on how nutrients, the food we eat, uh, affects how our cells function and how we age, we will be able to suggest how to modify our nutritional habits or more importantly, where exactly we should be targeting to develop uh, these new uh, pharmaceutical uh, interventions. So we as scientists, of course, we need to move as fast as possible to deliver our findings to the clinic. But at the same time, we as a society, policymakers, funding agencies, pharma companies, need to realize that a future without strong basic research will be simply a future of trials and errors. And that's 86% errors. Thank you very much.